Arkansas Times on Monday, March the 13th. News from Arkansas. I think the big news today hasn't yet happened. The legislative session gets underway this afternoon with House and Senate meetings. And education is going to be at the top of the agenda. There are two voucher bills in the House today. One's a big one, $6.5 million worth of spending on private school education in the first year under so-called education savings account bill. It's just a way to wash money through a nonprofit so there are no questions about state money going to religious schools. It will go there, of course. It could pay for a 1,000 or so students to, to go to private schools instead of public schools with public tax dollars donated by corporations that get the money back in the form of tax credits and deductions. There's another bill that in its own way is troublesome too. It's a supposed success scholarship program. There's legislation to allow foster children to enroll in that program and get money to go to private schools. The difference is this program was set up for a small number of students with disabilities, individual education plans, to go to special schools. Well, they've already said special schools don't matter. They, you don't have to be accredited anymore. And foster children won't have to have an individual education plan to get the money either. This is just an expansion of that program, perhaps another million dollars a year worth. Governor Asa Hutchinson, who once was an opponent of vouchers for education, is now more open to choice, but he worries about the cost of the budget, so these debates could be interesting, but I expect they'll pass the House before they're done. The state correction department said today that it has obtained some more potassium chloride. That its existing batch had gone out of date. It is now fixed with all the drugs it needs to execute eight men in 10 days in April. They've got to do it quickly because another drug, midazolam, may run out before the end of April, so they're in a hurry to execute. There are still attorneys trying to fight these executions in court. After we taped Friday, uh, we got word that Attorney General Jeff Sessions, U.S. Attorney General, had uh, sent out word to all 46 holdover appointees as U.S. attorneys in the Obama administration that they needed to resign immediately and clear out of their offices. Well, there are always changes of all the U.S. attorneys during changes in presidential administration. This one was a little, a little hasty and a little abrupt. And it did follow some complaints from Fox News that they weren't moving quickly enough to get rid of Democratic holdovers. But nonetheless, the changes were going to happen regardless. Chris Steyer of the Eastern District of Arkansas sent in his resignation effective at midnight Friday. The, the U.S. Attorney in the Western District is just an interim appointee, not an Obama appointee. So that per he will serve until a replacement is named by the Trump administration. The interesting thing here is that there are criminal investigations pending in both districts of Arkansas that involve Republican politicians. In one district, two former Republican legislators have been indicted, and another one has been implicated in a bribery scandal. The U.S. attorney in Manhattan, who thought he was going to stay on, was, was told he would be fired because he refused to resign. He was overseeing an investigation of Fox News, which suggests maybe some political uh, motivation in the decision to get rid of him. We can hope these investigations in Arkansas will continue under new leadership. That's, again, something else we'll have to see. Good news on the unemployment front. The January figures are in, and the uh, unemployment rate in Arkansas dropped to 3.8%, yet another record low. Lots of people are working, although the size of the workforce is about the same. Some people have dropped out of the workforce entirely. And in, since income tax isn't coming in that high, I guess they're working for low wages, but that's better than no work at all. Also on tap in the legislature today, this morning, the Senate approved an amended version of a so-called ag-gag bill. This is a bill to prevent people from making undercover video of animal abuse in places like chicken houses and pig feeding operations and that sort of thing. The bill was written so broadly that it would allow people to sue anybody in a business who went in and took video that was damaging that business, whether in a nursing home or a daycare center or whatever. They passed an amendment this morning to narrow the, the scope of the bill somewhat, but it's not still only about animal operations, although that's where the pressure is coming from to pass this bill. It's been very embarrassing to animal producers to see this film with some of the unspeakable things that have been done to animals. That fight will continue. Uh, some good news to report, I think. The Democrat Gazette has begun a series of articles about the number of people killed by police. It's not a figure that's kept. The use of deadly force by police is something we ought to track because it's a way to see where some people do a better job than others. What they found is that on, over the last six years, on average, about one person is killed every month by a police officer in Arkansas. About three-fourths of those who've been killed the last six years were black men. Whether this means anything about practices or bias, I don't know, but the figures are the figures. I do think we need to know more about this. 
just so we have a means of, of knowing if our police are doing a good job. I think even though most police shootings are found to be justified under the circumstances, that doesn't mean good police procedures were used. There was one case highlighted in the Democrat story about a man who was dragged out of his home and got upset about it and then was killed. The shooting was ruled justified, but they were making an arrest on a misdemeanor warrant. You have to wonder if there'd been a better way to do that. Here's not such a good piece of news. The Arkansas Baptist College reported Friday that because of a sharp drop in enrollment, it was going to have to cut pay to its staff of more than 200 people. This college, we thought it solved its problems with a big federal loan that took care of most past debt, but it turned out the financial problems were deeper than we knew previously. And finally, this truly is good news. Lucy's Place, which is a small charity in Arkansas and Little Rock, that provides a home for homeless LGBT youth, and particularly a lot of transgender kids who've had an awful hard time in society, says it's gonna be able to open a second home for, for these kids, thanks to a $50,000 grant from the Daughters of Charity of St. Louis. This is a religious order, by the way, doing the Lord's work, I have to say, and doing a good deed for people who aren't sometimes held in high regard. This is a particularly nice note as the Arkansas legislature works as hard as it can to discriminate against and marginalize LGBT people. Thanks to the Darbs of Charity of St. Louis. I'm Max Brantley. I'm still resisting. I'll be back tomorrow.